Stanford University. We really want Facebook and this whole kind of movement of social apps to not just be about kind of sharing moments in the day to day, but also like real utility and being able to learn and, and solve interesting problems. There are a lot of really interesting biological changes that go on in microgravity. For example, the way that nutrients circulate around cells, the way that genes are expressed. And so I think that we really have a lot to learn about how collective behavior operates by trying it in space. I want audiences to come away from this show with a sense of, wow, I never thought My Fair Lady could have looked like that. Not only in terms of the actors and the ethnicity of the actors in this production, but also in terms of the way it's designed. It's important to keep in mind that in, across most of Northern California, the existing precipitation deficits as a result of this uh, 13 or 14 month dry spell are so large that we would need anywhere from 10 to 20 major storms to bring us back to where we should be. See, by learning each other's languages and by showing such curiosity and respect for each other's culture, all of you are building bridges of understanding that will lead to so much more. And I'm here today because I know that our future depends on connections like these among young people like you across the globe. It starts with a single sheet of paper. What you see here is all the possible components to build a functional bright field and fluorescence microscope. In terms of how much it costs for us to manufacture, we built this out of 50 cents of parts and costs. We went through uh, over 20 landmark studies and meta-analyses from the past decade. We really, we did our homework on homework, okay? <laughs> we could not find unequivocal research that showed that homework is good for you, it helps you uh, learn responsibility, it keeps you out of trouble, and none of those things. None of those things are true. No. Well, this is the way life often works. You're on your way to something else when you find yourself drawn to an unexpected light. Now maybe that light is just a small flickering flame, but once it has your attention, maybe it roars up to the sky like a bonfire. Talk about the significance of what Stanford has done. So this, this move, this victory, is, is a major one in the climate movement, and it's a major one for the divestment movement specifically. These tiny wireless devices could treat a broad range of diseases such as Parkinson's, depression, epilepsy, heart failure and chronic pain. But in the course of your lives, perhaps without any plan on your part, you'll see suffering that's going to break your heart. And when it happens, don't turn away from it. That's the moment that change is born. The Anderson Collection at Stanford University is a truly remarkable collection. Um, it's a gift of the Anderson family comprised of 121 paintings and sculpture. One of the things that I'm focused on now is race and policing issues. It's a pressing issue. We're um, at a moment in time where we can begin to make progress. National Medal of Science II, Burton Richter, Stanford University. National Medal of Science II, Thomas Kylock. Stanford University. <laughs> well, you know, can this be true? I'm, I have this feeling of uh, incredible excitement, uh, hearts racing, uh, because you want to know if it's, it's, if it's real or not. I just find it impossible to sit on the stage at Maples Pavilion and say we cannot innovate technically that we can't come up with new solutions to problems that are better, cheaper, cleaner. That just seems to me to be entirely illogical and a real disservice to American research and American business. We've, we've had so many tough roads in the past that we've dealt with that I'm sure we can do this one.